All right, Jay, just looking at, um, give me some feedback on your work here. Um, I realize they're just um, paragraphs. Or just blocks of information, but um, it's hard for me to give you a real good understanding of uh, how you understand the content unless it's in an exam situation, so like a um, actual a response to a question, but anyway, we'll have a look. So I'm guessing this one's about um, page on the 23rd and links for him to peace. Um, okay, so page on the 23rd, a strong belief in the aspiration to promote peace, devoting his life and constructing his significant contributions around it. His first word, uh, his first hand witness of World War One and Two as a medic exposed him to the human destruction of war and thus inspired him to devote his life to creating peace and humanity. Okay, depending on what this is, you'd probably talk about his history here um, and who he was before um, he was John 23rd. Oh, you've said Ron Carly there, that's good. Um, maybe mention when he then became a priest as a result. Was it was when he was in the wars um, as a medic? Was it afterwards? Strong influence in the destruction of Cuban missile, de-escalation, good, of the Cuban missile crisis. That's proved to be one of the greatest contributions, which is an act of world peace. All right, good that you've got a quote in there as well. That prevented war, giving the Soviet Union a commendable reasoning to withdraw their missiles. By providing a solution to the leaders involved, that's good that you got another quote, they do all this in their power to save peace. Ron Carly's actions influenced the, and preserved peace on a global scale. All right. Um, probably want to start a new paragraph, even though I know it's only one. You've got a lot of information in there. Um, thus, his actions were influenced by his obedience. I uh, like how you've incorporated that quote there, upholding the word of God in the gospel. Ron Carly's promotion of peace was further evident. Contribution to the aid in cyclicals. Okay, I was going to say you needed something more than just the Cuban Missile Crisis, so that's good. Uh, in particular, his piece on uh, Parchment Terrace, Peace on Earth. Establish universal peace, truth, and charity, and liberty. You'd probably want to say why. If you, you need to know more than just the name of this. You need to know what it's about and why he. Um, penned that magisterium when he did there because you could say it was during the time of um, in between the Korean and the Vietnam War in there and the need um, for that world peace. Uh, first encyclical in history that was addressed by to the all men of goodwill rather than only bishops and laity of the Roman Catholic Church. All right, that's a really good um, qualification piece there. Translation to Peace on Earth is a direct expression of the Pope John the Twenty Third's idealistic view of peace and a united world. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, but I'd really have to see it in context uh, of a question to see whether it's um, whether you know how to use it rather than just regurgitating that information. Unity devoted much of his contributions to unity of what? Um, Unity correlating with dignity of humanity, which greatly impacted the world on a global scale. All right, you're going to need to explain what you're talking about here because you've said three different things. Contribu but unity between whom? Um, dignity of humanity. I think if you're looking at the Catholic social teaching, it's um, dignity of the human person. which is really good for you to link to um, ethics if you ever get a chance there as well, especially the bioethics. He worked valiantly to save as many Jews as possible from the traumas in Europe, helping them to escape through Turkey, upholding his title, the Apostolic Delegate to Turkey and Greece. Um, You haven't really said why that's unity. I can see I can make an implicit link, but you haven't made the explicit link of saying um, unity between um, religions or faiths or whatever it is. So I can see that's what you're trying to do, but you need to spell it out. Influential beliefs of human dignity 
the dignity of the human person. Again, that's the Catholic social teaching. Was accentuated, causing a pivotal difference to the lives of many in a fragile, crucial time in history. So you've got a pretty good flair for writing. Um, you're using, you're not using the same words over and over again. So you have good linking terms, which is excellent. Um, if you're talking about uni, you'd probably want to say, and when you're talking about the Catholic social teaching here, you'd say that even though it's Catholic social teaching, the dignity of the human person is pertinent to um, all faiths in the world. Um, so meeting with the Archbishop of Canterbury, so you've got to say which denomination that is if you're talking about unity there. Uh, first time in 600 years an Archbishop had visited the Vatican. An Archbishop, see, in Catholicism, Archbishops would have visited the Vatican all the time. The um, exceptional part of this was that he was um, from the Church of England, which you're going to have to make explicit if you're going to be talking about that there. Ecumenical milestone, absolutely it was. Okay, so your unity, you, you've used lots of good examples, but you've got to say unity between faiths and unity within the same faith, so the denominations of Christianity, you're going to have to make that overt. So again, you're saying what he's done, but you haven't had the lead-in statement here. This kind of highly significant, further enhanced through uh, Pope Paul VI meeting with the Orthodox Patriarch and the overturn of the excommunications that existed since the Great Schism of 1054. Okay, so that's fantastic and all that information is correct, but you need to lead in if you're talking about unity. So again, you need to use it in context. So I'd need to see you answer a question on unity. Um, all right, you said his flow on effect, so when you're looking at the syllabus, you're actually doing um, what it says there, the living religious tradition, so his, his impact on the tradition because other people are still using his work, so this is all good stuff here. Have a close reference to another Christian leader. Gospel, nothing impossible with God. Fantastic, good finish. Yeah. All right. Um, <coughs> Obedience again. I don't know the context, so I don't know what you're talking about. Um, in what you're talking about, uh, obedience to peace here, um, obedience and peace. Sorry, um, but I don't necessarily know why. I don't know what the obedience bit is. You'd have to give me some more information on this. But what I do like about your writing is that you're constantly going back to excerpts from um, other people's work, which is fantastic. Um, and, you're, and you're using magisterium or encyclicals as well as um, the sacred text, which is really good. But again, I'd need to see it in context. Change, I don't know this changes impact on the tradition or not. Um, just check the um, translation of Ajournamento. Yeah, good. Yeah, so this is all accurate information. And it's okay to use that same information again, absolutely. But what, what I'd really like for your next one, if um, so these are really good study notes, um, but you need to use them in context. So get yourself a couple of um, past papers and see um, if you can um, answer, use the same information to answer those questions. Give those to me and I'll have a look and see how well you use it in context. But what you're doing well is you've got accurate information, you've got good uh, terminology, you're using good quotes. Um, you just need to work on that other one, just the uh, leading into explaining why you're saying what you're saying. And that'll help if you have an um, essay as well. All right, good job.